speaker is Anna Scope. Anna is a geneticist and an artist. Uh, she's an associate professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. She's passionate about her membership in the Society of Advancement of Chicanos and Hispanics and Native Americans in Science. Anna, let's hear from your speci specific experience with tenure given your dual roles as a geneticist and an artist. All right, so I'm actually gonna share a story of um, stuff you shouldn't be doing to get tenure, but <laughs> things that you can be doing, all right? Um, so my lab studies the process of cell division. As you can see, it's a very beautiful event. But I'm going to share with you things I've been doing in, in the areas of outreach and, and engagement through scientific art. Um, I have affiliate faculty um, positions in uh, life science communication and also in the Art Institute. And I can actually train artists in my lab now. I have an art degree in addition to a biology degree. Um, but before I tell you what I do as a geneticist, I need to tell you my genetics. Right? And this is a pedigree analysis, right? So um, what you see here is uh, someone that is probably is just crazier than me, my father up here. So he was a sculptor, um, uh, but he was a medical illustrator and also taught anatomy to medical students. So when I grew up in a household, art and science were no different. Um, my father married my mother, who was a ceramist and an art, ed art educator. Um, they gave birth to four children. And if, if you know anything about genetics, you immediately point out that I might be uh, inherited the recessive gene for science. <laughs> um, however, um, it, that's, you know, so how do I fit into this? But what, what I actually inherited, we all inherited the same things from my parents, and that was creative, innovative ways of tackling problems and visualizing them in different ways. Um, and, and growing up in a household of artists, most of you probably know art. Artists usually don't make a lot of money, and that was true for us and our family. Um, but as a scientist, I actually make less than all of my brothers and sisters. <laughs> so for those of you interested in the arts, you know, uh, there is hope, you know. So this is what my house looked like. This was my environment before coming to science. Here's my father sculpting um, the bust of his football coach. My father was a bit of a renaissance man. He played football on a, on a team for Syracuse that went to the Orange Bowl. Um, this is his coach who's, who's in the Hall of Fame, and he's doing it, this is in my basement in my home. My dad had an art school there. Um, as you can see, this is not a sterile environment. <laughs> um, and going into science might be quite difficult for someone like myself. Um, but the fortunate thing of me gr growing up with a uh, low income, the wonderful work study program uh, was something that got me into the lab and I joined a lab right away and I'd be very fascinated with biology um, and I ended up seeing images like this. And so if you imagine I've told you about being an artist, um, images like this was like seeing a Picasso or a Moreau or anything. I was totally transfixed with the process of cell division because I'm a visual learner, I'm a dyslexic, I'm someone who struggled um, with math. And so I love this, I love doing, and I still work on this today, but I realized at this point that this should be shared because as a low income person who pays taxes, I knew very well that taxes go towards um, science and funding as I got further into the system, but, but we're not doing a good job at that, right? Um, we should share that. But as a grad student, I was, I was so fascinated by what you saw underneath the microscope of other people. I wanted to see more. So I, as a grad student, 20 years ago, I started a C. elegans, a little nematode I work on, C. elegans art show. And that's been going for 20 years. And it got a lot of press and a, a lot of viral uh, sort of um, support. And I've been doing it for a long time. But when I became a faculty member, I didn't think there was something wrong with it. I've been doing that for a long time. I came to Madison, and as, as a, someone who came uh, from a family of artists, I, had, I came to my new building and I had no, there was no art on the wall. And I said, I can't work here, I'm super depressed, <laughs> right? So I didn't know there were rules in the academia. And so I went up to the dean's office above my chair and I said, um, I can't work here, but I have this idea I want to do. I want to put art on the walls because I want students to come in and see what we're doing here. And he's like, how much do you need? And he goes, I don't know, I can give you 15,000. I said, sure, I'll take it. So this is, <laughs> so this is what I've done. And I, you know, my department thought this was crazy, but what's happened is 
there are school buses full of children are coming here, engaging with what we're doing. I work on this beautiful C. elegans worm up there, but people work on yeast, which makes beer, and Arabidopsis, which is a mustard, and that is a beautiful uh, Drosophila fruit fry embryo that looks like a nice Easter egg. So these are images that engage the public and bring them in. And from this, a lot of things happened on campus organically, and this is how I ended up in the art department. So what happened was is we realized that there were all these things we can share of the research going on on campus, so we started something called the Cool Science Image Competition. So I want to take, um, just query the audience, what do people think this is? A Monet. Uh, it looks like a Monet, right? So someone who is an artist sees that right away, right? But guess what this is? This is from my very dear friend and colleague, the, the Aki Ikeda's lab. This is actually blood vessels in the eye. <laughs> Amazing, right? So what it, but what's great about science art, it has the ability to reel the public, especially young children that are very interested, and from diverse groups getting into science through the, the beauty of art and science. And so that sort of keeps driving me um, you know, to continue to do this, and it's very, very successful, and it's quite easy for someone who's a microscopist. So, what am I doing now? What are the incentives? So, I'm, I'm funded, and one of the greatest funding mechanisms, I think, is the NSF because of the broader impact, so someone is, I'm a huge Shirley Malcolm supporter, and so these broader impacts, I probably wouldn't have stayed in science if it weren't for the NSF, so broader impacts are, are something that a lot of scientists is a sort of a matter of fact, and they write it the last week for the grants is due. I spend years working on this and coming up with ideas, and I integrate art, the artists into my laboratory and to, to, to learn how to engage. And what I didn't know actually this year is that there is a $50,000 amount that can, you can put into these budgets. And so I really want a lot of scientists to know that if you plan out, you can do this. And this is a project that's gonna go up in the biotech center, so it's called Genetics Reflections. And the idea here is that you look into these mirrors or petri plates, you see yourself, but you see what's inside of you, the cells. Very interactive, and this is also gonna have a traveling component and go all over the world. And so I'm really, I really wanna push is that it doesn't take much to do something. If you have a passion, you can really combine it with what you do, your science, and get it out there. And, and I, I just want to end, I really like to tell a lot of faculty, it's, you should always have a hobby in science, and it might bring you a lot of um, uh, pleasure for having a hobby, but you can bring that into science and you can engage the public more. So one of the things I do is I have a food blog. And so um, I found out that if you make cakes that look like something you're studying, you can impact a lot more people than you can ever imagine. <laughs> right? So, and every paper I publish, I now make a cake associated with the figure. This is actually super cheap. Sugar is pretty cheap, as you know. And so, um, you, this is a great way for people to engage. The good thing, of the, ma the, <coughs> simple, sim the simple idea here is that people know what a cake is. They might not know what cell division is, but you can engage them with something that they know and tell them about something that you study. And I study that little pinch point there called the midbody, which you probably didn't know, but the sugar drew you in. And <laughs> I really want to say that it doesn't take much to engage. You can have passions, but you can meld that with your science. And there's a lot of funding mechanisms to support this. And thank you. <laughs>